All right, everybody, welcome back to Culture Basta. Thank you for joining us again on today's uh, video with us. Uh, we have a lot of stuff to talk about. Usually, I'm not the one who intros it, Luca is, but of course, you know, today's a little bit of a different story. So, uh, obviously, we're going to be talking about the Champions League. The main story being Chelsea got through. It was kind of a given. They have the better, better, better team. They're already up. But Juventus going into a home leg, second leg against Villarreal, uh, uh, tied 1-1, but still you think they have, you know, home field advantage and we, they've been playing better in Serie A or getting results. Didn't happen today. You know, it was, a, it was a weird situation where the first half, they had plenty of chances, didn't put any away. And then the second half, it just, I don't know what happened. They just wiltered down and they end up losing 3-0. So I will give it to uh, my Juventino friend here, the floor. He has plenty of say, so plenty to say. So go ahead, my friend. How do you feel? Mm. I mean, I was really wearing a navy blue shirt before this. I just turned it to, to black now for obvious reasons. But, I mean, yeah, nice little eye roll. I swear, bro. Dramatic. Juventus deserve this. Not even 100%, like 300%. Juventus deserves this. They deserve this, and they literally deserve to literally not even make Champions League this season, and they deserve to go down to B. I swear to God, bro. I swear. I don't know if you guys watched the game, but, like, people were saying – people all over Twitter were saying – Wow, we had all the chances in the first half. The ball just didn't want to go in. Yeah, but you had 180 minutes to beat this team. You didn't have 90 minutes. So if the ball doesn't go in one game, you still have to fall back on the first game that you played. What's the point of going up? We literally, in the first minute, the first minute of this tie of the 180 minutes was the best minute. That was it. You go up 1-0, sit back reactionary reactionary concede sit back oh we have the the home game the second leg the ball doesn't want to go in it's going to happen that the ball is not going to want to freaking go in but you can't be desperate looking for a goal like that when you it, it's not like this was a it's not like it was a one and done look it's going to happen there's a one and done game you're going to have chances, chances. The freaking ball doesn't want to go in. But you had 180 minutes to settle this tie. 180 minutes. They deserve Luca, it. I, Luca, I saw, I saw the extent. I wasn't able to watch the game. You guys know that. And it, I mean, I was able to watch the extended highlights, though. And um, the misses in the first half, especially like the first 10, 15 minutes. However, I don't remember how long it was until like Villarreal finally got control. But... Um, those are misses that like of a team that is not there mentally, you know, yep. those aren't, those aren't normal misses. Like Vlaovic is missing balls right in front of goal. Like, yep. and then the ball is trickling to the back post Quadrado's running in to, to get a clear shot. And, and I don't remember if it was Morata or Vlaovic that steals the ball. From Morata. Him. No, in, in that one, I'm actually going to say Quadrado took the ball for, from, from him. Morata was. I don't. I don't agree. Well, I don't agree. Morata because, because, because Morata had the ball an comes. Shot. Imagine. Imagine. Imagine your face. Your back is away from goal. Uh, your back is facing goal, right? Yeah. The ball is on your left side. Morata turns, and as he's turning, he's winding up to to have a shot. Cuadrado's not even there yet. By the time, if but he that's just lets my him point. hit, like if if Cuadrado just yells out, he has it. He has an easier shot there. Cuadrado has the easy shot there. He's he's looking at goal. He's running two goals. One of them to say something. One of them yeah, to none say none of them something. says anything. Nothing. It should be Cuadrado saying something because he sees that whole field. He sees everything. He sees how open the spot is, and it's basically an open goal. Like Look, bro. all they need to do is just Look. all they need to do is just pass it into the other side of the goal. It's a goal. And and, the thing, and you know what? My point yeah. is, when you make mistakes like that, it means that the the team just isn't there mentally. Like they, they weren't prepared yeah. for this type of a game. They really yeah. weren't. They were they went in like I like how that's afraid. how they went in. I don't oh. I don't even want to say afraid. They went in um not convincing. They, they just couldn't they, yeah, not they, convincing. Could, they couldn't deal not with the pressure. Convincing. They couldn't deal with the pressure. The problem look, the problem with this Juventus and the prop people are gonna sit people see people after these games, everyone loves to be a coach. Everyone is a freaking coach. 
whether you're a Juve fan or you're a Milan fan or Inter or a Napoli fan or a Roma, it doesn't matter who you are. Everyone thinks that they're a freaking coach. Right after the game, it's a personnel problem. Why is why is Cuadrado playing? Why is Danilo playing? Delict, oh my God, handball king. Bro, it doesn't matter what personnel you had today. It's the style of play that we have. It's so reactionary. A oh, you, real Juve team has a is great proactive. Squad. A real Juve team has a great squad. Exactly. There's no reason why they should be getting knocked. A out real to team out is proactive. So everyone needs to stop with this nonsense. Cuadrado shouldn't be there. He's a diving merchant. If it's not, Cuadrado is literally one of the best players we have going forward that can give you something. He can make something out of nothing. Cuadrado had moment. a good game. Exactly. Cuadrado, from what I saw, had a you good know, game. there's there's people there's people that are finding ways to say Cuadrado was shit. Bro, if any, yeah. and praising yeah. Arthur. Arthur, troppo lento, bro. He's so slow. Arthur is so slow on the ball. Yeah. Yeah, he does you what I do in FIFA. Dictate. He runs in bro, circles like me. He just goes in circles. He goes in circles doing gloves. nothing, Arthur. It's so Look, frustrating. It's, it, it's how many years now that they get knocked out, like, embarrassingly? Bro, three years in a row. Four. I, four. Yeah, three I don't want to say four. Three, I don't want to say four. I don't want to say four because this, Ajax was 16. an actual good team. Ajax was a quarterfinal. Ajax was... Yeah. I actually should have been in the final that year. Let's be honest. Like yeah. they should they they have been. Have, Spurs had no reason to to beat them. So yeah. I don't even want to. I don't even want to say like that was embarrassing to lose to Ajax. Although they literally had, they still had a very good team. Juve that still was the same type of squad that they went to the final with against Real Madrid. Look, plus look, Ronaldo. Yeah, you know what I mean. Look, so, when they when when Juve went out against Porto, it was bad, right? But Everyone says, oh, we went out to Porto. We should, ah, Juve embarrassed. And then you look at it and you say, okay, but there was an obvious chance to give the penalty in the first leg in Portugal that the referee didn't even, he didn't even check the, he didn't even yeah, check the bar. Didn't. But we're Juve. Do we really have to rely on the penalty? No call. Against Porto, mm. against uh, Lyon. No, I shouldn't. Against that's, Lyon. That's business Europe, to be taken care of. That's what I'm saying. Against Lyon, it wasn't a penalty. Everyone in their right mind knows that Bentancur didn't even foul the guy. Gives a penalty. Okay, so what? Get on with it. Just freaking play. But that's the that's the main difference now. There's just not a coach there. There hasn't been a coach there to ingrain this philosophy in these players anymore. Like, like under Conte the first few years and then Allegri obviously taking over the reins and but that was already like Conte's team, you know what I mean? So like he didn't really have to do much. He just had to like keep it going, you know. Look, um, at the end of the day, now the they kind of with... lost their identity. I feel yeah. there's no there's no identity. There's no cohesiveness. They're not convincing. And today was not a personnel problem. Juventus has no identity with no. this coach. There's yeah. instead of being instead of being proactive, they are reactive. And it happens time and time again. And you can get away with it in the Serie A. You can get away with it at times. But the problem is in the Champions League, anything can happen. And anyone that went into this game saying, oh, Villarreal. There's a reason why I literally almost placed that bet today. I had a feeling. I should have, honestly. Well, at least I would have made some money. Yeah, that was funny oh, that you did say that on Twitter. Come on, man. Well, I mean, you think about it this way, right? Like, Allegri, um, not all of them, obviously, but a lot of these players he had the first time, he, like the last time he was at Juve. So he made it work back then. It doesn't work It doesn't work now. It's just as simple as that. So it, it, it could also be personnel, but I agree more in the sense where they have good enough personnel to even, for you know, not taking any respect or credit away from Villarreal, but this Juve team should win against them, you know, regardless. That's not a question. Doesn't matter if they have De Shio starting at the at fullback. It doesn't matter. De Shio actually played well too. Uh, but I'm just saying, as an yeah, example, sure, sure, Arthur, sure. even with Arthur on the field, who who wasn't, you know, who hasn't been the best in his Johnny, the three of us could have been on the field, man. We would have done. We would have given a little more. I swear to God. I just was disappointed after that first half because, like Dan said, I mean, Vlavic got a little bit unlucky. He hit the post, but um, you know, that was a great, great like one time shot. But they should have scored like three or four. And I don't think it's a matter of mentality and like, oh, we didn't score, so now you know, let's get down. No, I don't think that was it. No, I just, it was. It wasn't even that. It's just look, this game is a classic. Look, Juventus did not play badly. Juventus did not play a poor game. But the problem is, 
they played a really, really, really bad first leg where they were just they were just saying, "Ah, okay, we have the second yeah, leg." Yeah, let's set up. Then you second. come. To, then you come to the second leg, and things are gonna happen. You're gonna hit the post. The ball won't go in. Then the freak penalty happens right at the end. It was like maybe like the third time Villarreal got into Juve's box. Right. Those things happen. Then you're you're forced under pressure. Boom! Bad defending on the second goal done then you're chasing the game of course you're going to be exposed and the third penalty is going to happen and anyone that has to say something about the de- delict bro is nah. literally they have brain damage what are they going you to have say? something to say about delict quadrado you literally don't just 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 say you never watched the game before yeah literally. but at that point what's he going to do they're going to that's what i'm him, saying I, they're that's going to call him mr handball because he got another handball penalty like relax dude that's like, what, what i'm saying man and the thing is people are saying yeah tomori is better than delict um no, he's not. They're going around. Everyone, everyone is trying to say that great, Delict, great player, but no. Everyone is trying to say that Delict literally is not the best center back in the world right now. UEFA needs to shut up. Any UEFA that says Delict is the, the best center back in the world right now is literally like is literally living in like fantasy land. He's not. But the difference is Delict has more of a ceiling than all of these players have. He's not Delict even. Is the, still what like twenty two? The dude is the the dude is yeah. not even like twenty four yet. Yeah, that's look, there's way. there's there's there are players that like that hit their ceiling too early. There are players that you know bloom in their 30s, you know what I mean? Like Barzagi, yeah. you know what I mean? But with a guy like Delict, I mean, he's already he he captained Ajax at 17 years old in the Europa League final, like, mm-hmm. like you, I don't think, think people understand. Final. I don't, I don't even think – I don't think people understand the, who they're talking about when, they, when they're talking about Delict. Delict is a tremendous talent. He's probably going to be the best center back in the world one day, maybe. But, you know, I, right now they're growing pains, just like with Donnarumma. Donnarumma is going to be the greatest goalie in the world one day. Yeah. If not, he, he, he probably was in the summer. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But this guy was playing for AC Milan at 16 years old, starting. Yeah. This is the you know this is those the guys these guys are gonna have growing pains like but look at just who because looks, they make a mistake like, look who he's partnered with too like he's he's carrying Rugani that's another thing mm-hmm. like even though Rugani can give you a good performance once in a while in the Serie A like you know you're gonna win a UCL or no, go Rugani's far with not this, you're gonna the, go the far biggest, with in the Champions League with him no Delict has a lot of a lot to do back there the best mm-hmm. thing Rugani ever did in his career was not somehow like not getting a yellow card all season in like Serie A. Which people like like yeah, to that boast was a big about, triumph. <laughs> about him as if that was something big, you know what I mean? Like Rugani Man, was never good. These people don't know ball. I'm telling you, honestly, yeah, Rugani today, was never that good. Today, today was a learning experience, man. You really see how much people talk out of their ass and how much people literally. Everyone thinks they're a coach. Mm-hmm. Immediately when the game ends, everyone thinks they're a coach. It doesn't matter when. Napoli loses, everyone thinks they're a coach. Inter loses, everyone thinks they're a coach. Juve today goes out. Oh my God, Emery masterclass. No, Juve fans, call it for what it is. It was a big, big embarrassment. You what, know what else is an embarrassment? What masterclass did Villarreal put on? Dude, you know what else is an embarrassment? Italian football. Yeah. yeah. Thing. We are embarrassing. Good. That's another thing. We are embarrassing. We went... What was it? I think like from 2011 to 2014, it was horrible. That was when we lost our uh, our, our fourth spot. Mm-hmm. We got it back, started getting better. I mean, Juve went to two finals. Inter went to Europa League final. Um, you know, teams were starting to do good again. Now all of a sudden, it's like every Italian team either gets knocked down in the first round in the in the in the group stage or the first round. Yeah, yeah that's true. It's disgusting. It's terrible. Like. Juve gets knocked out every year around 16. Um, Napoli, I don't even want, like, Napoli yeah, can barely, we there. can't even get back into the Champions League. I mean, hopefully next year it will be. But, like, my point is, how is it that Napoli with Aronica and, and Paolo Cannavaro were, were, were taking it to Bayern Munich Chelsea. And, yeah. and Dortmund and, and Chelsea? And now with with these guys with Koulibaly and Fabian Ruiz, all these bigger players, they they can they they get smashed by like one of the worst Barcelona teams in in the, the last twenty years. Which 
let's be honest, they're they're getting better. Barcelona are getting people, better. I'm not saying they're bad anymore. Because people but still have, like people of terrible. Back, people of back then they they really knew what it meant. Now look, I'm not trying to say players of today don't value the importance of who they play for. And I don't know, I don't know them. A lot of these guys are great professionals, but I just think players then had more of an edge. Mm. They had they had more of an edge yeah. when it came to big moments. And I, I'm not trying to insult players of today saying they're they're less professionals than these guys. They don't care. They but don't. I just, no, no, it's true. They don't. Luca. We players, spoke about this. I you, know, you, I know, but it's you, like you. I I named Aronica, right? Yeah. Aronica was never gonna get better than Napoli. It's a miracle that, that that Napoli team even made the Champions League. You know what I mean? Mm. So those guys played their heart out there because they knew that that was it. That was their career right there. That game against Chelsea at the San Paolo is their career. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. the height of their career. Yeah, and it will never get better than that. You know what I mean? It will yeah. literally never get, never get better than that. Now you got guys like I, I said, for example, Fabian Ruiz, which is he's having a great season. Even in those games, he played well. You know what I mean? But this guy is not going to be here at Napoli more than this contract. He's he's probably not even gonna. He's probably Next not going to resign. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and he 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 wants to play for Real Madrid. You know what I mean? He has a better ceiling. That's yeah, my yeah. point. Like these that now these guys, you know, they and that's just that's normal to me, honestly, because yeah. you know you can't expect a guy like Fabio Ruiz to go play against uh, these guys in Champions League or Europa League and, and expect him to give his all and 100% for yeah. Napoli. You know what I mean? For the yeah. city. You can expect him to give him give his all for himself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah no, it's, 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 a question it's not even just pull. Napoli either. It's Milan too. Like Milan and Inter, they're, they're embarrassing. Yeah. They're all embarrassing. You know, yeah. you know, you know who's a perfect example of that? A player that will, like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that him and Aronica are on the same level playing wise. I think one is far superior, but like you can see that like he's of that old, he's of that older generation. Albiol, Albiol has had, Albiol has had like a, like a continuity to his career that he's still yeah. going at this level, and he's the perfect person for Torres to learn from. Mm-hmm. We, we, me and John we, know best. Yeah, dude, he was on the verge of being world class. Like he, if he wasn't, he was he right is. there. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying, if he wasn't, he's right there. He's one of the, the but, like, literally yeah. the, the most top player that you can say before being world-class, but if not. What's, That's him. What do players like him and Chiellini have in common? It's their mind. It's literally the yeah, mentality. It's, 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 it's mentality, it's their mind, dude. and they're smart, dude, of course. Knowledge With and Albiol, everything, experience. Sorry, sorry, finish, John? No, no, no I'm, just, I'm just going along. With it. That's what I was saying. Oh, okay. With Albiol, it didn't matter. In big games, he was more reliable than Koulibaly. I agree. He was always more reliable. This guy, I mean, then again, I think about it, and he's like, we got him from Real Madrid. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. that's where he like, came from. Big games, big game Champions. players for Napoli were like, I can count Callejon, Iguain, Albiol, um, all these guys. Where'd they come from? Real Madrid. You know Real what I mean? Madrid. We were we had a we had a, a a specific our sporting director at the time. I think his name was Bigon, right? Yeah. They, they had a specific uh, – well, it was actually Benitez that got all these guys. But my, my oh, point yeah. is that we got these guys from teams that, you know, we knew that they, they knew what it took to win games. And we've lost that. We've lost we that, have, uh, that we've edge. Had, we've lost any winning edge we had, and that's yeah. the thing. And it was actually funny that Luca brought that up because I, I was watching the beginning of the UA game with my father, and I was just like – I was I was looking at the center backs and then I he was like who's playing for you for you of it and it was Delic and Rugani and I was like you remember Albiol is he world class too he's like I mean he's right there if he wasn't he was right there and I'm, and now Dan says you know like he could he was more trustworthy in bigger bigger matches than Kulibaly and it's just it's absolutely true like Kuli, if I'm I was thinking back to myself thinking back to the defenses and how back then we still blame the defense for everything as Napoli fans right that's always the thing ah defense was key. Every single time something happens in the game, it we track it back it to the never defense. Him. And it was, and now I'm thinking, and I'm like, I can't remember. Obviously, there were times, but I can't remember an Albiol mistake. If anything, yeah. it would have it would be Cooley Billy having a brain fart, and Cooley Billy's world class. Cooley mm-hmm. Billy ceiling wise is pro- is better than him, but also, in those moments, never. Also, Teneva got seen. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, that, of course. That first game, Higuain played back at the San Paulo with, with Milan. Or no, when he was with Milan. I don't know. It wasn't the first game he played back there because he played with you right first. Yeah, he stuck on a tackle. I remember. That tackle, that meant something. You know what I mean? That's the thing, dude. If you don't have... You can have all the talent in the world. You can have all the preparation. So tu non hai la quella cattiveria. If you don't have it in you, you're not gonna make yeah, a difference. You're not gonna make a difference at difference. all. It's not. It's not you gonna carry only you. Get, you could. You could beat Spezia. Yeah, you yeah. can only get, go play against only Barcelona. Get... Look, look. You gotta go play against Barcelona. You gotta go play against look, Arsenal. You gotta go play against big teams. It's pure example happen. of this. Pure, pure example. I remember it was Juve, Tottenham in the UCL. Uh, I think it was the quarter, the, no, it was the round of 16. Okay. I think it was, I think it was the last time the Juve has gone through to the quarterfinal. Anyway, they were playing away in London at Spurs, losing the game one, one, zero, losing on an aggregate three, two, man. When, when, when I tell you, human son was giving Barzagli like a nightmare, like Barzagli was having such a rough time at some point late in the first half. What does he do? Calm. He literally just he literally just like steps on the dude, like just that, cracked him. Just yeah. cracked him. Doesn't even try. Of course, he's gonna take a yellow. We're like, ah, oh, but see, that's dirty. That's not playing. Who yeah, gives you a put shit? The fear of God. In the fear, guy. That's that's what you, those. That's what separates the men from the boys. The players that are mm-hmm. able to recognize something like that. That's true. And honestly, the way Juventus this season. It's remind it's reminding me of the Juve that came up from B. They they're in a they have to rebuild, they have to rebuild because, yeah they're they're in they're in the top four now in the Serie A but the Serie A honestly they're only in the top four because teams keep dropping stupid points Atalanta's yeah. dropping points uh, Milan and Inter Napoli have dropped points that's the only reason why Juve is still fighting there, good squad but the identity is, isn't there like in. Like in the years 2009, 2010, 2010, 2011, when Inter and Milan won the titles, they were they were finishing they finished seventh place back to back, losing to Fulham in the Europa League. Yeah, yeah, Juve is similar situation to Napoli in terms of like a cycle ending. Like Allegri came back, but his prior those players from his prior cycle, even if but it's not personnel, it's yeah. not. They need now. They well, need I'm telling new, you, I'm telling you, feet. today's game, today, this whole tie had nothing to do with no, personnel. Nothing. No, no, but I'm saying this whole tie against Villarreal for Juve had nothing to do with personnel. Nothing. If you had a different manager, I guarantee you if, if Pirlo was the coach, Juve was going through to the quarterfinal. I guarantee you. It's not a question of Cuadrado, Danilo, Delict. Uh, De Chilio, Arthur it has nothing to it has nothing to do with that. How they are oriented in the field is up to the coach. How they play, it's not good enough. It's not good enough at the end of the day. Well, listen, we only have a few minutes left because I know Dan's got to get going. But yeah, Luca, I'll let you close out. Any uh, any message to the Twitter to uh, Twitter family, the cultural Twitter family that you want to let them know before you get off? Have tell them a good night. What do you want to leave them off with? Okay. I thought that I thought that Milan Twitter was the stupidest one out there. Juve Twitter is literally like by far the stupidest brand of people on Twitter. Oh, well, del no, I swear. Non scherzo. I swear. I swear. <laughs> no, no, but but okay, fine, Dan. But but I saw some things today. Look, anyone that wants Quadrado out, go see a doctor. Anyone that thinks Delict won't be the best center back in the world and Tomori is better, go see a doctor. That's that, that's all I have to say. Because everyone thinks that they're a coach. Everybody, it comes down to the game ends. Everyone on Twitter is a is a coach. They know best. They know well, best, but they they, they say they make no sense. Don't you know these people like literally have never touched a field before? And I'm not saying like like yeah, you guys aren't saying you know you yeah. We're not yeah. we're not saying, and I'm not saying that by you know by me saying that is not being like oh I know like everything like I'm not, but but. There is a difference when you've literally never touched a field yeah. and you don't know how things work on a field than when you're off the field and you're watching it happen. You know what I mean? And the, the best example of that is Callejon, but we'll leave that for another video. Well, yeah. Yeah, we'll do that for another one. Another one. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, it was a good good talk. Hopefully, 
you let some of your feelings out and you feel a little bit better, Luca. But appreciate bit. you guys joining. Uh, keep following us as well. Thank you again for 100 followers on Twitter. So we'll get the other ones going next. So Calcio Basta TM on Twitter and uh, TikTok, Calcio Basta on YouTube. Thank you guys very much. We'll be back later in the week, obviously, with some Serie A talk as well. Ciao. Bye, guys. Peace.